creating your reality. That's right. How to create. And you can create anything in your life. You can have it. It's a law of the universe. It must happen. If you know how, first you gotta know what you want, but once you know what you want, you can have it. Absolutely, absolutely. It, that's a law of the universe. You just know how to apply it. There's no reason to have, be in lack at all. You can have anything you want. She's gonna tell us about it. Here is the book that we published of hers called Awakening to Your Creation. And I'm gonna let Julia Thank Hansen you. take it away. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Dolores. Ah, whew, I made it. I am so happy to be here. Thank you so much. And Dolores, thank you so much for having me and having the patience to wait for my airplane. <laughs> Today I want to talk about creation. My book is called Awakening to Your Creation. And a little bit, it's a little bit my story, and it's a little bit everybody's story because we're all creators. We are all one. And we're all creators with the universe. We're co-creators with God. That makes you one of the most powerful human beings in the entire known universe. You can do anything. You can create anything you want. So we ask ourselves a lot, if you can create anything you want, why is it we're not getting what we want? How, yeah, how many people really know what they want in life and don't get it? Hands? Oh, you all have what you want? OK, OK, all right. <laughs> Boy, have I got a great crowd. My story starts when I was 21 years old. I had questions. I wanted to know why my world got tipped on its head once again. And my world was always getting tipped on its head, and apparently it still is, because I can't seem to make an airplane. But what I really wanted to know was, how can I create what it is I want in this world without all of this craziness, without all of this, this weirdness happening? And my friend and I were sitting in the living room one afternoon, and we were talking about the mysteries of life. And all of a sudden, I hear, haven't you heard? Life is a mystery. And I'm like, I didn't say that. My friend said he didn't say it. And I looked up, and there's an angel in my living room. And he, she, it, because they're androgynous, but he was more masculine to me, so I called him Kevin. He told me his name, and it was the most beautiful symphonic sound I have ever heard in my life. It was a musical symphony so beautiful that I couldn't repeat it even, even if I had to. It hit on every sense. It made you warm. It made you cold. It made you laugh. It made you cry. It was beautiful. And I'm looking at this magnificent being standing in the living room, because I'm a very logical thinker, and I thought I was going crazy. The only thing I had to relate it to was Star Trek, and I kept thinking, okay, I've just morphed myself into a Star Trek episode. And that didn't actually happen, but he did come in to answer our questions, and the very first thing he told me was, Julia, love is all there is. Everything else is stuff you make up. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I didn't make all this icky stuff up that happened to me. I had just come off a broken back. I've broken my back three times. And I'm still walking and I'm still jumping horses. <laughs> my publisher doesn't know that yet, but <laughs> yes, I'm still jumping horses. So um, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, if love is all there is and everything else is stuff we make up, I'm not seeing too much love in the world. This was back in 1981. There was a lot of really icky stuff going on in the world. And they said, and my angel looked at me and he said, Julia, love is what you use to create. The energy of love permeates the entire universe. How you use that energy is up to the individual. You can create using icky stuff or you can create using good stuff. Energy is inert. Energy does not have a positive or negative. It just is. It's what you put on that energy that makes it good, bad, right, wrong, ugly, happy, sad, whatever. And so that was my first lesson with my angel. And then he proceeded to tell me, Julia, you already are perfect, whole, and complete just the way you are. And I went, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, I know me, and I know I'm not perfect. And he goes, oh, yes, you are. He goes, not only are you perfect, you don't need any downloads, you don't need any upgrades, you don't need any new software, you don't need any new thinking apparatus more perfect and whole and complete than you already are. I was 21 years old, I thought I knew everything. 
Turns out I didn't. You already are perfect, whole, and complete. You are a co-creator with God. What you choose to do with it is everything, and it is choice. We look at the world and we wonder why the things happen to us that happen to us. We look at the world and we say, oh my gosh, I had all this stuff happen to me and, and all of this negative energy is hitting me. You know, my next door neighbor kicked the dog, the dog came home, kicked the cat, the cat scratched you. All of this negative stuff is happening and you have to ask yourself why. It couldn't be my fault, could it? Couldn't possibly be my fault, right? Right? Well, it is, okay? Because you create your choices. You choose in any given moment what you want to have your reality to be. In any given moment, you make thousands of choices. Like, I chose to get on a plane. I could have chosen to say, you know, this is just going to be too hard. I can't do it. I'm not going to stand in line for three hours for this airplane ride. Or I could come and speak in front of this magnificent audience and give you something that perhaps you haven't had before. I don't know. But life is choice. Everything in life is choice. And if I were to tell you angels are real, and love is all there is, and you're perfect, whole, and complete, what would you say to that? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So let's see how that manifests in your world. What I want to do is to allow you the opportunity to make a choice and to create something really wonderful in your world. Now. There's a couple things with that. There's a couple caveats with that. You've made choices in the past, not only in this lifetime, but in previous lifetimes. So when you incarnate in this lifetime, you're still kind of bringing a little baggage along with you. Does anybody have baggage from past lives? <laughs> yeah, I seem to carry a couple of suitcases with me. But, uh, but I'm working on that part because now I'm making new choices. I am choosing to do something different. I am choosing a higher vibrational path, okay? So, my first, my first piece of advice would be don't take anything personally, okay? People are always have opinions, okay? This is what most people, this is where we get in trouble. Most people have opinions, and they're, they love giving them to you, right? And my theory is everybody's opinion is correct. Everybody's opinion is right because it's your opinion. I have not walked 25 miles in your shoes, nor have I said... I've done what you've done in every one of your lifetimes. I know better than you what you should do. Does that even make sense? Right, so, so don't take things personally. People have opinions, okay, and they're probably gonna give them to you and, you, and I say, oh, that's fabulous, that's wonderful, I love that, because that's your opinion. Now, you wanna hear mine? <laughs> but you see, you see what I'm saying. So, it goes back to choice, but I'm serious, because those opinions, there's two rules the angels gave me on this planet, and this is kind of cool. There's two rules on this planet. The first one is, you cannot interfere with the free will choice of another. And I know that Dolores talks about this a lot. That's the first thing you tell me. I was 21 years old. Do you know how many times a day we do that? Yeah, I do it a lot, and, and I'm really being conscious of it now, though. That's the difference. I'm making conscious choices. Nine times out of ten, our lives, we make unconscious choices because we're not really thinking about what it is we're doing in this moment. We're thinking about yesterday and, you know, how we're going to get a job. We're thinking about tomorrow, what's going to happen if we don't get a job yesterday. But we're very rarely concentrating on the now moment. We're very rarely here, present, fully, completely present. One of Jeshua's best and most wonderful gifts, in my opinion, because I remember that lifetime, was his ability to be fully present with his audience. He gave you 100% of his attention all the time. 